Hi everyone, welcome to your practice. This is a 20 minute hip opening flow. So it's really good for grounding you, helping you to really calm that nervous system. And physically we'll be just working the front, back, inner and outer sides of the pelvis. So let's get started. We'll begin right up at the top of the yoga mat. In Tadasana, mountain pose, place your feet hips distance apart, running parallel to one another. Flip your palms forward, drop the shoulders, and soften your gaze. Take one clearing breath to begin. In through the nose. Out through the mouth. Good. Inhale, lift the arms, lift the gaze. Exhale, swan dive forward, bending at the knees, leading with the chest with a neutral spine. Inhale, hands to shins, extend the crown of your head long. Exhale, float the right foot to the back of the yoga mat. Drop the back knee, patting it as necessary. Untuck the toes and take your hands to your front knee. Glide the pelvis forward, drawing the left hip back as you go. Throughout your practice, keep your breath slow and steady, letting it really be a guide or a barometer for how you are doing. If you are pushing yourself too much, you'll notice the breath get a little shallower. So try to keep yourself right in that sweet spot for each of your stretches today. One more breath, sliding that pelvis forward, opening the chest. And then exhale, release your hands to the right side of the foot and then heel toe the foot out to the left. Lift the chest forward and make sure that the knee stays vertically stacked over that left ankle. The tendency will be for it to splay out. If this is a good stretch, stay. If you're still looking for more, you can lower that right forearm down to the yoga mat. Lead with the back of your head to release. Heel toe the foot into position. Look forward, step forward. Inhale, lengthen halfway. Straight arms, straight legs. Exhale, soften the knees, float the left foot back. Drop that back knee, patting it as necessary. Release the top of the foot. And then glide the hips into position. Place your hands to your front knee as you simultaneously pull the right hip back. Each inhale will pull you slightly out of the postures and then those exhales will help you to deepen. So use your breath. Let's release the hands down. Heel toe the foot to the right now, placing the hands on the inside of the foot. Lengthen the chest forward. You'll feel that slight arch in the spine helps you to deepen into the stretch of the right hip. You can stay there or lower the left forearm to the mat now. Hold and breathe. Nice lead with the back of the head to rise on up. Heel toe the foot into position. This time tuck your back toes and then lift the knee, stepping yourselves back to downward facing dog. With your inhale, shift forward to plank pose, top of a push up. On your exhale, lower knees, hug your elbows in to release the chest, and then lift the knees, lengthen out the legs and the tops of the feet right to the mat. 
Place your forearms beneath you, elbows either directly under the shoulders or slightly forward. Pull the chest through the forearms. I like to energetically push my forearms down and then hug them into my ribs. That'll help you to really broaden across the collarbones here. Sphinx pose isolates the thoracic, that mid-region of the spine. So enjoy that nice stretch. It's a wonderful beginning back bend in your yoga flows. To release, gaze down. Now slide the hands under your shoulders. Press through hands and knees all the way back to down dog. One big breath here. Lift the hips high. Press the palms to open the chest toward the back of your mat. Good. Tiptoe the feet to the top of the mat now. Take your time. Taking as much bend in those knees as you need to maintain that neutral spine. Inhale, lengthen halfway. Exhale, fold. Round the feet, inhale, rise all the way up. Place hands to heart. Gaze to your fingertips. Inhale, lift the arms, lift the gaze. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale, lengthen halfway. If there's space, you can start to migrate fingertips down to the floor for that position if you wish. Exhale, float the right foot to the back of the mat. This time, plant your heel at 90 degrees, bring your arms to a T for warrior two. As you exhale, descend into your posture, letting that front knee stack directly over the ankle, bringing the femur bone down almost parallel to the mat if that's available to you. If you're working with any injury, stay up a little higher to maintain that muscular energy around the joints. Arms are parallel to the mat. Gaze is across the front hand for strength and support. Place your back hand to your thigh, flip your front palm and lift up and back for a mild exalted warrior. Good. Return the arms through warrior two and then straighten the front leg. Swing the hips back as you reach forward, triangle pose. Release the fingertips to the inner shin, upper arm to sky. And now I want your core to stay quite engaged through this triangle. When we drop the hand down to the mat or push too hard into the shin, I see a lot of caving. So instead of collapsing into the ribs, Use the core, press the hand to the shin, and see how much muscular energy you can maintain in that core to help you peel the top shoulder back. This requires a lot of strength. It's a great way to practice your triangle pose. For your last few breaths, push through the back hip down out to that back heel to receive that nice hip flexor stretch. Let's release, gaze down, give a bend through that front knee and windmill your hands to either side of the foot. Come onto your back toes, look forward, step forward. Inhale, lengthen halfway. Exhale, float the left foot to the back of the mat. Plant your back heel at 90 degrees, bring your arms to a T and exhale, sink into warrior two. Stack in front knee, over ankle. I often see eager warriors where you're really reaching, so see if you can stack your shoulders vertically over your hips instead. Sink into the front thigh. Gaze across the front hand. Flip your front palm, place back hand to thigh, and give a mild, exalted warrior lifting up and back. 
and then return through warrior two. This time, straighten the front leg, kick the hips back, reach forward. Place the back of the hand to the inner shin, upper arm to the sky. Peel the top shoulder back as you lengthen the bottom rib cage toward the front of your yoga mat. For your last few breaths, keep that anchor through the medial arch of the back foot to exaggerate the hip flexor stretch. Gaze down, bend the knee, and release your hands to either side of your front foot. Come onto your back toes, step back, downward facing dog. Inhale, forward plank pose, top of the push-up. Exhale, lower knees, chest, pelvis. This time, preparing for cobra. Press the pelvis down to the yoga mat. Anchor the tops of the thighs and the tops of the feet. Place your hands directly under your shoulders, firm elbows to midline, and then draw the chest forward and up. We'll take five. Exhale, release. Inhale to Cobra. Exhale, release. Three more with your breath. Last round, soften the glutes as you rise up to create more space around the low back. Exhale, rose. Tuck your toes, press through hands and knees, and then lift, down dog. Good, everyone. Place those feet a little closer in now, and then bend both knees deeply. Stretch your belly back toward your thighs. Press your big toe mounds to the yoga mat. And then spiral your inner thighs back and then up until your legs become slightly straight. Good. Inhale, rise to the tips of the toes and take as many steps as you need to find the top of the mat. Inhale, lengthen halfway. Keep that length. Place hands to hips, hug shoulders to back, and slowly push to the feet to rise all the way up. One balancing pose here. Place your, or hook rather, your right ankle just above the left knee, keeping space between your thighs. Place your hands now in front of your chest. Inhale here. And exhale, start to sink down as if you were coming into a chair pose. This is a wonderful stretch for the right glute. Sink a little deeper. Keep the hips squared forward. And you can either stay upright or lower down enough to wrap the uh, right toes around the left tricep. If balance is really off today, you can be playing with blocks under your hands or if they reach fingertips right down to the mat. Last breath, everyone. Sink a bit deeper. Drop that tailbone. Scoop it under to lift the chest. And then press down to rise. Whew. Good. Inhale, lift the arms, lift the gaze. Exhale, hands to heart. Hook the left ankle just above that right knee, keeping space between the thighs. Sink down into your pose. The tendency is to kick that hip back, the hip of the standing leg. So wrap the hip back as you sink. Excellent. You can either stay here or wrap the toes around the tricep. One more breath, sink deeper, and then press to rise all the way up. Good, inhale, lift the arms, lift the gaze. 
Exhale, hands to heart. Take your feet wide, point your toes out, and then slowly descend into Malasana. Keeping the tailbone under as you drop. Place elbows to the inner thighs. Simultaneously squeeze the adductors, the inner thighs, toward those arms. Use that bandha, that energy lock, to help you lift the chest, broadening the collarbones and opening the heart. This pose feels so good. If the heels are really lifted here, the modification is to roll up a blanket underneath them. Or if you feel like you're just about to fall, backwards, you can also place a block underneath your sitting bones. So feel free to pause the video and take some modifications to make this practice perfect for you. Release your hands behind you now, drop to your sitting bones, and come all the way onto your back. We'll do figure four pose now from that supine position. So bend your knees. Hook the right ankle just above the left knee, keep space between the thighs. With the right hand, gently draw the knee forward. This is stage one. If you're looking for more, stage two, interlace your hands behind the left thigh. Stage three, interlace the hands around the left shin. Wherever you are, feel the hips still squared forward. For most of us, the right hip will need to move forward more. If you'd like to deepen, pull that left knee in. Draw off the shoulders and then press to the back of your head, that space right behind the eyes. This pose feels quite good if you take a very minute rock to the left and then back to center. That helps you to isolate into the stretch, which we're looking for a gluteus medius and a piriformis stretch on the right side, the back of the pelvis. So take another breath here, and then as you exhale, release, left foot to the mat, followed by the right. Clearing breath between sides. Good, hook that left ankle just above the right knee, keep space between the thighs. Interlace the hands if you're going for stage two or stage three. So work with your level here. Notice that the lifted foot is actually flexed. So that foot is in dorsiflexion to really stabilize that ankle joint. Make sure that the hips are squared forward. And if you're still looking for more, exhale, hug that right knee in. Drop the shoulders. Press to the back of the head, stabilizing the neck spine. Exhale to release. Right foot to the yoga mat, followed by the left, a clearing breath here. Let's close with Apasana. Draw both knees in. Hands find the tops of the knees and then make gentle circles around the sacrum. Literally rocking your nervous system into that parasympathetic state. Switch directions. <laughs> 